Greetings everyone and welcome to the second video of the video series on coping with adversity and recovering from crisis where we will apply some of the concepts we learned in the previous video on stress response and methods we can use to regulate it. Firstly, we will go back to the stress process and upgrade the knowledge from the previous lesson by getting into the resources we use for evaluating a potential stressful event. We will do that with the help of some real life examples and then as promised, dig into the reframing process step by step throughout this video and finish up with some final important tips on applying reframing in your everyday life. And somewhere in between, there's a surprise exercise we will do together that has nothing to do with reframing so that we keep things as interesting as possible. And let's go! The equipment you will need for this video is once again a pen and paper as well as a red marker. If you had one, that would be great. So this will probably be familiar to you, especially if you went to this video straight after you watched the first one. If that's not the case, no worries, because we will revise this now real quick and then get on with the upgrade. So the previous time we analyzed the response nature of stress its background mechanisms, the sympathetic nervous system, and types of stress symptoms we can experience when stressed out, psychological, physiological, and psychophysiological. This time we will talk about the second important aspect of stress, which is the evaluation. And once we get into that, we will have elaborated the whole definition and got a hold of the true meaning behind stress, theoretical and applied-wise. How great is that? So, as we are presented with a potential stressful event, we automatically begin to judge our capacities of dealing with whatever challenge we have ahead of us in terms of our own skills and the support we have access to from our environment. Therefore, we have our inner resources to coping with stress, for example, prior experience, knowledge, physical capacities, values, motivation, self-belief, and outer resources, for example, family support, coaches, mentors, events, settings in terms of time and place, weather, surroundings, equipment, therefore everything that comes outside of us and can either help us or hinder us in our performance. We use all of our resources to obtain this evaluation and that is the antecedent, therefore the very thing that leads to our response. Let's check out two examples that demonstrate how our evaluations, no matter how realistic or subjective, can create stress. And we will start with the most recent event that probably stressed out the whole wide world. Lockdown due to the pandemic of COVID-19. And I think it wouldn't be incorrect to say that many of you couldn't imagine staying inside 24-7 for an uncertain amount of time when you first heard of the restrictions. Therefore, your first evaluation regarding your inner resources would be, I can't do that, no way, I'll go crazy inside, or, you know, something of the sort. Then some of you who live in a big house might have had a follow-up evaluation based on your environment, something like, okay, maybe I won't go that crazy because I have a big garden and I can work out there and take some fresh air every single day. Accordingly, if we took only these two evaluations and put them together, your anxiety due to restrictions would be mild. And despite the fact that the restrictions might influence your performance and well-being negatively, the environment in which you would be located during the lockdown would support you. However, we have to take into consideration that we don't have only two evaluations going in our minds, especially in an objectively serious matter such as the world pandemic. If we take the environmental resources as an example, the fact that you have to carry a mask when you go grocery shopping or wash your hands 57 times a day or sanitize your hands 75 times a day or the fact that you're not allowed to meet with your friends and loved ones or the mere fact that there's a deadly virus that we know nothing about spreading around, it would be fair to conclude that most of us have experienced severe anxiety at some point during this crisis. And once you finish this video series, you will have the strategies to deal with stress and negative emotions in these kind of situations. If we take another example, something that is common fear nowadays, 
public speaking. From primary school to retirement, we are sooner or later obliged to make a presentation about something in front of an audience. And that can be quite scary most of the times. However, it can be scary for different reasons, or in other words, different resources once again. Let's say someone lacks confidence in public speaking. He thinks he sucks at it and therefore has gone through several occasions where he stood in front of an audience delivering his presentation while feeling insecure. No need to mention that consequently his performance hasn't reached its peak. On the other hand, let's say that this time he will be presenting at the same place he has presented many times before. He's familiar with the environment, with the equipment available for presentations and with the people that are organizing the event. Therefore, combining these two evaluations, once again we get mild anxiety, this time due to the lack of self-confidence in public speaking. However, we know that there are many resources we can use to form our evaluation about a potentially stressful event. In this case, imagine that the guy gets in touch with a friend one day and tells him about this public speaking event he's about to attend and the burden this represents for him due to his lack of self-confidence when standing in front of an audience. And now imagine this guy's friend saying, Oh, I totally get you, bro. I had the same thing going on. But, you know, then I found a mental coach and with his help, I managed to overcome it. Like, check out this cool technique that you can use before your presentation to calm down and rock the stage. And then he tells him about the short and effective exercise you can do to get it together before your presentation. Once our guy hears about this from his friend, his anxiety levels would most probably drop down. He now has something to lean on, knowing that this exercise will help him out with his stress response prior to the event. And in case he wants to work on this even further, he has the phone number of the mental coach who has helped his friend with the same issue. So with the help of an outer resource, he reframed the dysfunctional inner resource that was preventing him from performing to his full potential. In other words, he decided to do something about it and now he doesn't have to stress out so much anymore. And now it's your turn! We managed to see how our inner and outer evaluations look like from two different examples, so we are now ready to make the first step towards the reframing process. As mentioned recently, our evaluations come from different directions and not all of them are objective or true, but even if they are, we want to adapt them to a point at which they are believable to us as well as supportive of our well-being and performance. Step one will be to choose a potential stressful event that awaits you, or in case you can think of one that awaits you, you can use the most recent event that stressed you out. Take a piece of paper or the downloadable worksheet provided and describe all the stressful things about the event you've chosen in relation to you and in relation to your environment. Write down everything that comes to mind and make sure to involve both types of evaluation, inner and outer. You have two minutes.
Okay, time's up. If you haven't managed to write everything down, feel free to pause and take some more time. If not, let's move on. I will give examples of answers related to lockdown. I listed some things that were stressful for me as well as for most of you probably, such as washing hands all the time, not being able to meet up with your friends, being prevented from continuing your work, school, projects, then seeing the news about COVID-19 everywhere you go, and lockdown vocabulary everywhere you go means smartphone, PC, TV, radio, or the kitchen where you find your siblings talking about it. Then the fact that you can set your foot outside even if you're alone on the street. This of course depends on the regulations of the country you've spent your lockdown in, but either way, far from pleasant. Then, feeling useless, especially in the beginning when you maybe weren't sure what to invest your energy in. Then, of course, the fear from this unpredictable danger surrounding you, your loved ones, and in this case, the whole world. And considering everything we mentioned so far, it is not surprising that such a thing as running out of toilet paper will make your blood boil as well. Especially if there's a chance to go to the supermarket and find none there. Good thing no one can see your angry face under that mask. Now, the next step is really simple. You go through everything you wrote and you ask yourself, what of these things are under your control? For example, if you're an athlete and wrote that the next post-quarantine match is stressful for you, which means that you have to practice a lot before the day of the game comes, preparation would be a thing under your control. Because no matter the circumstances, preparation is something that's up to you. Even during lockdown, professional athletes have devoted themselves to individual practices at home every single day. On the other hand, if you're worried that it will be raining on the day of the match because you think you don't play well in the rain, that is something out of your control. In sports psychology, we call this process control the controllables. So check which of the things that you wrote are under your control and cross out those that are not under your control with a red marker. I don't want you to overthink this, so I'll give you one minute for this task. Starting now. Okay, time's up. This time I don't want you to pause the video, but if you need a couple of more seconds to cross out those uncontrollables, feel free to do so. Going back to the previous example, this is what I have crossed out. So, I can't control the washing hands protocol because there's a deadly virus spreading out there, so I don't want to mess around with that. It's true that I'm not able to hang out with my friends in person, but thanks to all the technology we have available nowadays, I can do that virtually. Similarly, I can find a way to continue with my project online, hence these video series. For others, transferring your work to online format might represent quite a challenge, for example, if you're a hairdresser, and sometimes not at all, for example, if you're a computer programmer. So this depends. But in most cases, you can find a way to be creative with virtual gadgets that we have available. I can't control seeing the news about the virus, even though I tried. It didn't work, so I crossed that out. What's outside my control are also the governmental decisions on restrictions. On the other hand, I did not allow myself to feel useless for long and started quickly doing some housework and devoting my time to things I have been postponing prior to the pandemic. What I also can't control is the fear from this virus. It's a healthy form of fear that will keep you and your loved ones protected as much as possible in these uncertain times. If you remember that bear from the previous video, unless you're intoxicated or brainwashed, you will be freaked out if you run into it. 
same goes with this virus. The only difference being that it's invisible, which maybe makes it even worse. But luckily we have our sympathetic nervous system to keep us vigilant and alert when we go out for the time being. If you feel like your sympathetic nervous system is overly active throughout the day, which means your fear might have gone overboard and is therefore unhealthy, try out some of the stress coping methods we mentioned in the previous video. Because even though you can't control it, you can always regulate it to your convenience. And I think that taking care of toilet paper supplies is quite self-explanatory. So. And now, the best and most important part of this exercise, the things that you crossed out, the ones you can't control, you simply let go. Why? Because you can't control them. It's that simple. The things you objectively can't control should not be something you devote your main focus on and definitely not something you should stress about. I mean, it would be useless since you can't control them, wouldn't you agree? Imagine an athlete spending his precious time one day ahead of the game on what the weather will be like, checking the forecast every 20 minutes, instead of investing his time to physically and mentally prepare for the big day, as preparation is something he can actually influence. So I want you to take a look at all the things you crossed out on your list and feel those things falling off your chest. Doesn't it make you breathe easier? Let's spend a minute just focusing on our breathing. It is so much lighter now that we have so much less to worry about. That's why you can slow your breathing down a bit. Just feel the air filling up your belly and slowly leaving through your nose out. If it makes it any easier, put one hand on your chest and the other on your belly. Now close your eyes and follow your breath. Where does it go? Try to get it to your belly. As you do that, remember to slow down your breath as much as you feel like it and simply follow it to your belly and all the way up until it leaves your body. You can do this with your eyes closed if it helps you to relax even more. Hope we got that parasympathetic nervous system going, but not too much because we are about to reach the peak of our activity, which is the final stage of challenging your evaluations of stress-provoking situations. Imagine reframing as literally taking a frame with some dysfunctional thought you have about a situation and changing it with a fresh one. Suddenly it gets a new look, a new perspective to approach the thing that you find stressful. For example, one of the thoughts I had during lockdown was that I'm wasting my precious time sitting at home. I knew that this was not helping me in the situation I was in, so I reframed it to a great opportunity where I get to do things that I haven't had time to do before the pandemic. Do you see how my reframed thought is just as realistic as the first one, but has the bright edge to it? Something that gives me motivation and positive energy in a realistically stressful situation? Your turn. Identify some of the negative thoughts related to your controllables and reframe them into something more empowering while keeping it real. So take a look at the things that are left uncrossed on your list, find the existing perspective you have on them by putting your thoughts into words on the paper or worksheet and put a new frame to them. You have two minutes.
How did it go? I realize it takes some time to pick the best new frame, so you can take some more time for that in peace after this video. Let's wrap it up so that you can get back to work in case you haven't finished the reframing process yet. Once you finish, or in case you have already finished, pick your favorite marker when you get the chance and literally draw a new frame around each new perspective you wrote. You can also rewrite them on a fresh sheet of paper if you wish. Then put it on a visible place, maybe on the wall next to your desk or the fridge or your wardrobe, or maybe take a picture of it and use it as your desktop smartphone background. And until the time of your challenge comes, enjoy the view. Remember to live by this new perspective you created and to repeat this process for whatever potential stressful situation awaits you in the future. And now let's do a really quick recap of this video. We completed the definition of stress by looking into the resources we have for forming evaluations of a potentially stressful situation. These judgments about the potentially stressful event are based on our own skills and the support available in our environment. Then we saw with two examples how our overall evaluation is based on many different resources and how finding just one extra resource can turn things for the better. Then we began with the process of learning and applying a new skill that can be your new positive resource for facing stressful events. We began the reframing process by picking a stressful event that awaits us and writing down all our evaluations related to it. We identified the controllables and crossed out the uncontrollables. As a result, we started breathing easier, so we did a quick body-to-mind breathing relaxation technique to spice things up. Then we defined reframing and performed the main part of the exercise by identifying the dysfunctional thoughts we have with regards to our controllables and decorating them with a new, fresh and useful frame. The last step was to actually draw a frame around your new perspectives and place them somewhere to remind you of the beautiful view you created for yourself today. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and can't wait for you to join me in the next one where we will get into the concept of adversity and how to manage it. Thank you and see you soon.